Hi, I'm Jenny Hutchinson from the Hyde Collection, and I'm here to present the answer to this week's guest, the silhouette. So here we go. Here's the shape that we posted earlier on our Hyde Collection Facebook page. This sculpture is believed to have been created in Greece around 350 BC. It came to the Hyde Collection in 1941. The figure is made from Pentelic marble, which refers to Mount Pentelicus near Athens in the Penteli mountain range of Greece. This region is famous for its pure white marble that has a very fine grain. What is missing, however, is the brightly colored paint that would have covered the marble, uh, which in the ancient world resembled their brightly colored dress. Ancient Grecian culture was very visual and extremely structured. Roles specified by gender and social standing were very distinct, and the color of dress was one way in which the stations of society could be marked. Fabrics were dyed with bright colors and would often include very decorative patterns. Fabrics dyed in red or purple were worn by the highest and wealthiest members of society because those dyes were the most expensive. Another component of this figure that has been lost to history, as you may have most noted, <laughs> is the head. Unfortunately, we don't have a means of finding out when or how this may occurred. It likely occurred due to natural causes via weather over time or through the excavation process, as many of these sculptural forms became buried over time. This figure is wearing an outer garment called a himation, which was one large rectangular square of fabric. As we see suggested here, this fabric could extend over the head of the wearer, as they may have been overcome with emotion. A himation is usually worn over a chiton, which is a garment which would have been closest to the body. Despite the very structured forms of society, both in gender and social status, garments were based upon function, material, and protection opposed to individual identity. As I noted, color could denote stations of society. Pieces could be interchangeable between gender, though there could be differences between the length of the garment due to occasion. This garment, as we can see, goes to the ankles of this figure. Ancient Greek clothing was usually made or created out of natural fibers. Linen was the most common due to the hot climate. The cloth created for this garment was rarely cut. Therefore, the more fabric one wore, the wealthier they appeared along with the colorful dyes. The drape of the fabric was worn around the body and would also be given considerable thought and changed or draped in such a way that would be in trend with a specific time period. Footwear was not worn very often, especially within the household. However, depending upon the occasion, they may have worn sandals, soft shoes, or this figure seems to portray boots, likely made from leather. Traditionally, Greek sculpture is broken down into four periods, geometric, followed by Archaic, Classical, and Hellenistic. This sculpture would fit the pre-Hellenistic period, as it was known for having more expressive characteristics. This is a form of funerary sculpture. Most sculpture in ancient Greece has been lost to history, yet most of the surviving sculpture is a type of funerary sculpture. Funerary sculpture provided an opportunity for the living to remember and commune with the deceased. There were generally three types of funerary sculpture, standing nude males, or Apollo types, a standing draped female, or a sitting draped female, as we have here. The seated figure was typically a representation of a mother figure of the household. As family and particularly male succession was such an important part of ancient Greece culture. The inclusion of a figure representing a mother was significant symbolically because she is a representation of the person that made succession and the life cycle possible. More details and attributes of this person would have been included to speak to the more specifics of the individual that was deceased. As we noted, they may have had a more brightly colored pattern or color painted upon these garments. Uh, however, there could also be uh, gestures uh, provided by the individuals pictured that would have also revealed information about their rank and social standing in society. Though the fabric appears to be thin, folding around the forms of the body, transparent fabric usually only would have been worn by the male members of society. Females could only be nude or even suggested to be nude at the public baths. 
This fabric is believed to be modeled after linen due to the way it folds around the needs resembling the forms of the body underneath. Linen was also the more common fabric. Female figures also tend, tend to dominate the classical Athenian tombstones, as women played a significant role in the burial process. They conducted a series of elaborate rituals for the deceased. The washing of the body in oil, placing the body in a high bed for a funeral procession, and the cremation. The female figures of the household were also responsible for vocalizing the grief of the family, usually through lamented song. These funerary monuments also played a significant role in providing an inscriptional and visual identification of the deceased. This figure is carved in what is referred to as high relief. High relief is when sculpted forms project at least half or more from their natural circumference from a background. This sculpture was likely to be mostly disengaged from the background. We further speculate this sculpture would have been attached to a tall slab that would have likely included other high relief carvings in the form of a temple along with other figures. Those figures would have been placed facing this figure on the opposite side. We make this analysis based upon a narrow, narrow vertical band that occurs on the back side of the figure. It's this vertical form that likely connected the figure to the larger slab. This form along with the companion figures and form of a temple created one large sculptural tableau. In essence, what's important to note here is this form is not believed to have been situated as in the round, meaning someone could walk around it a way, the way that we see it presented today. We also speculate given the fold of the fabric and position of, or suggested position of the head with respect to traditional modes of expression in other funerary sculptures. The missing right hand likely would have appeared up by the hood, likely pulling the hood over the head. Pulling the cloak down over the head was a common gesture of mourning. Though much of time has passed and there is still more speculation than certainty, the, the certainties that we do have are based upon the many figures that have survived the weather of time. Funerary figures are much of what has survived the test of time because the ancient Greeks had such a strong tradition of creating highly visual grave markers and in many. These sculptures were mass produced in workshops and there was often a lead sculptor who often remained anonymous. Even a simple, more modest grave marker would have been within the means of an average citizen. The higher the degree of the sculpting and more elaborate circumstances of the sculpture by the inclusion of more figures would have been designed for a wealthier member of society. While there is a great deal of uniformity to the composition, design, and placement of figures within these sculptures, there's also often the inclusion of characteristics that would have been more specific to the individual. They were also markers of reflection and served as memorial structures. They were also placed in very visual locations, usually on the roads leading to the city gates so that all that entered or left could reflect upon them. Well, thank you for joining me in this reveal and discussion today. And I hope you learned a lot of interesting facts about another work in our collection. And we look forward to opening this weekend. If you're interested in visiting us back at the Hyde Collection, uh, please refer to our website, www.hydecollection.org. Uh, we do have some specifics as to how we are uh, reopening, uh, and we are looking for prior reservations to be made. Hope you all have a wonderful evening, and we'll all see you very soon. Bye.